Welcome back to part two of our how-to guide on route summarization for CCNAs. My name is Humphrey Chung for Router Guides. We're going to take a look at two practice problems, two sets of subnets that we have to summarize. And we're going to work through the steps that we talked about in part one to get the correct summary. And then in part three, we'll take a look at that GNS3 file that I've attached and we'll go through that as a practice problem because that one gets a lot of people. Okay, let's take a look at practice problem two. We've been given these four subnets, so 112, 114, 116, and 110. So they all start with 172.16, and you can see here that they all have different subnet masks behind them. And that's not too big of a deal. This gets some people, but pretty much we can, we can ignore these. Going through our steps, our first step is to rewrite everything from lowest to highest. And this is pretty easy. We know that it's 110, 112, 114, and 116. Uh, what I can do here is I don't need to write out the whole 172, 16. It just, it's too much. So I'm just going to deal with this third octet here. And that also answers our second step which is the interesting octet, which one is the one that's changing, and we know it's not, it's not the first one, it's not the second one, but the third one that is changing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to convert these three numbers into binary, and we're going to bust out with our trusty Windows calculator. Go to decimal, 110 is that number in binary. I'm just going to move this across. 1101230 and this looks like it's seven digits so I'm going to add a zero in front of there. 112 okay 112 is 1110000 that's seven digits so I'll add one more, make it eight. Also I'm going to split these into halves just to make things a little bit easier to read. 114, 114 is 1110010, that's seven digits, so we'll add a zero in front of there, and split it up, and then we have, looks like I mistyped that there, it's 116, 116, 116 in binary is 1110100. That's seven digits, so we'll add one in there to make it a complete eight and split it in half. All right, so that's everything in binary. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at everything that matches, everything that matches, and we can see here that the first three parts, first three parts match. So that makes it pretty easy. First three parts match. Step five, we're going to convert the matching bits into decimal. And thank God we have our trusty binary cheater cheater thing up there, 128, 64, 32, 16, and so on. So we just put a zero here, a one here, and a one there because that's our three bits. So if we add up 64 and 32, we get a 96, a 96. So our starting network is going to be 172.16.96.0. Okay, so how big of a spread should we get? What's going to be our mask? Pretty easy stuff. We take a look. Well, we know that we matched on the first three bits. We go back up here to that subnet, our easy binary cheater, cheater listing. We put ones under the first three numbers and we add them up. So that should give us 96, 224, 224. And because we were dealing with the third octet, we know that the first part's gonna be 255, second part's gonna be 255, last part's gonna be 224, 224. Also the slash notation, we know that this is a slash eight, now it's a slash 16. We add in three parts for the first three bits. So that's a 17, that's an 18, and that's a 19. So slash 19. So the answer that we will get is slash 19, 
or if you want to write it out the long way, 255-255-224.0. So that's going to be our summary route for these four addresses. Okay, let's take a look at our third practice problem. Okay, third practice problem, 192, 168, 1.something. So we have a 152, a 128, a 160, and a 192. All different subnet masks, but we already know we don't really have to worry about any of those. Our first order business is we have to rewrite everything. So from lowest to highest, it looks like a 128 is the lowest. 152, 160, and a 192. All right. Now we look at our interesting octet. Our interesting octet is going to be the last guy over here. Our fourth spot. We're going to take a look at our numbers and we're going to expand everything out into binary. And what I'm going to do is, since this takes a while, I'm going to do all of this in notepad, pause everything and come back and just have all the binary bits there. Okay, we're done with step three, which is converting everything to binary. We can see that these are binary bits for those four particular numbers in our fourth octet. Now what we do is step four, we find the matching bits. And we're not going to go too far on this one because we got our first digit here and we're matching on those ones. But that's it. Everything else is different. So we only have matching on this first digit here, that first digit. Okay, then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to convert those matching bits to decimal. So we put a 1 here, and, and that's it, nothing else. And so we have a 128. So our beginning network, 192.168.1.128. That's our beginning network. Now to find the mask, find the mask is also very interesting because what we're going to do is we put a 1 up here, and we add that up and it also gives us 128. So our mask is going to be, let's write the network first, 192.168.1.128. Our mask, we know it's going to be 255.255.255 because we're dealing with the fourth octet here. This is 255.255.255 and we're just messing with here. Because we went one bit over, we put a 1 here, that gives us 128. And if you want to write it the slash notation, it's going to be a slash 25, slash 25. And that's because we're going from 8, plus 8 gives us 16, plus another 8 gives us 24, and we went one extra bit to the right. That gives us from 24 to 25. And as always, you want to do your sanity check. Your sanity check is, well, we're going up by 128 IP addresses. We're starting from dot .128. If we add 128 to that, to there, we get 256. And it's actually, we're not going to reach 256. We're going to be dealing with 255. So you can see that this range of numbers will fit all of that. We're not leaving any subnet out. And also, we're not getting uh, any extra subnets that don't belong in there. Okay, this was part two of our how-to guide on route summarization. Stay tuned for part three. This is where we're going to take a look at a GNS3 file that's going to show a particular subnetting problem that a lot of people get wrong. And you're going to see exactly why we get this, this particular answer that seems to trip a lot of people up. So come back for part three and fire up your GNS3 and that topology that's linked down in the details below.